man. Artorius and Nominat. Neither one of them's a force to be reckoned with. Then why do you look so happy? Because I'm still alive. And if I'm alive, I can fight. You're certainly... optimistic. That's just the sort of demon I am. What about you, though? You gonna call that whole revenge thing off? If only. That's just the sort of demon I'm not. Then we need to find a way to beat them. You can mope after you're dead. We? You're still going to hell? Yeah. After all, I wouldn't be here if Lafayette hadn't saved my life. Surely you know me by now. I might not look it, but duty and honor flow through my veins. A demon, a Moloch, a witch, and now an exorcist. We've turned into a real band of misfits. I didn't have any other choice. We're stuck with her. Yeah, I know. We can't afford to lose Lafayette. Now that we know the full extent of Inominat's strength, we need that boy more than ever. Do you think Inominat really is an Empyrean? You got me, but I do know this. Whatever he is, he's no ordinary Moloch. And the Abbey intends on using that power. To what end, I couldn't say. If we're going to win this, we need to uncover Inominat's true nature and the Abbey's secret goals. Indeed. At the very least, I think we can safely assume that Eifried's disappearance is part of their schemes. We might be able to extract some information out of that Eleanor woman as well. Agreed. But no torture. I'm not shattering our only vessel. Yeah, I get that. Given the pact they share, if Eleanor goes down, Lafayette becomes a demon, right? What? No one told me that! That's just how it is between Moloch and Vessel. I know she's a threat, but we need to keep her close for the time being. Well, we sure are in it deep now. Hey, don't overwork yourself. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? Isn't it obvious? I... I disobeyed you, Velvet. Don't sweat it. I'm still alive thanks to you. I just... I didn't want to see you die. That's why I... why I did that. To save you. I'm sorry, too. Acting the way I did. Treating you like an object. When I came with you, that was my own choice. You gave me the freedom to choose. And what would you choose now? We only have more troubles ahead. You're still going to fight, aren't you? Yeah, I can't stop now. Even so, I've made my choice. I'm coming with you. I see. Anyway... It's not like I have any idea where we are now. That's a good point. Ah ha ha! 
But an object misused is one thing. A person misused is quite another. What's your point? What's your point is what I want to know. Not only did you blow the whole revenge thing, you didn't even leave a scratch. Do you have any plan on where to go from here? I'll admit it. Minominat's power is far beyond what I could ever have imagined. But I'll never give up. No matter how many times I have to try, I'll devour them all. Bet you 100 gold you break first. Huh? You heard me. 100 gold says that you give up. I lost a bet with Rokuro when you had to go and survive. Cost me 10 gold. I'm just looking to come out on top. Whatever, fine. Oh, then it looks like we have a bet. There might be some fun in me sticking around after all. Not that I much care how it all turns out. I'm just looking to kill time. Hey, Velvet. I've got something that might help with Inominat. Oh. Is this that book you took from the villa? It is. Look closely at the crest on the cover. It's the same one from the temple. Does that book say anything about Inominat? Yes. But I can't read it. It's written in the ancient tongue. Oh, don't cry, baby boy. My friend Grimoire might be able to decipher that for you. Really? Well, maybe, maybe not. She'd have to take a look first. Well, where is she? Your friend, I mean. No idea. The last letter I got from her was sent from me Salt down in South Gand. Not much to work with here. True, but I'll have fun watching you try. Oh, I'll find her. Don't you worry about that. That's the spirit. Don't give up just yet. <sighs> we'll rest inside these ruins. You're still weak. the things a damned demon watching over me how could i have let this happen i'm such a disgrace <laughs> to atone for this grave sin It's Melchior's communication art. I send Melchior to check out the Earth Pulse. And what a strange sight does he find. My lord, I have failed you. Lift your head, Eleanor. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. A special mission? You are to protect the Malak Lafiset 
and bring him to the Logris Abbey headquarters. This mission is highly classified and not to be shared with even the Legates. Protect the Malik and bring him to the capital then? With the utmost secrecy, your becoming his vessel is in fact quite fortunate. Maybe so. But with me as his vessel, the Malik may interfere. This Malik may have his own will, but he can be manipulated. Do whatever it takes to get the job done, Eleanor. You act under my full authorization. Even were it to mean obeying the orders of a demon? But, my lord, what Malik could possibly be that valuable? Are you saying you cannot? Shame is only a fleeting emotion. It is will and reason that ultimately prevail in the face of calamity. My lord, I live to serve the principles of your teachings. The Earth Pulse will soon close. From here on, you must use your own discretion to execute your mission. feeling I'm fine listen don't try anything like that again pain is pain is scary right I'm all right no more running away I'm Lafisa it's good to finally meet you properly Eleanor y yeah likewise don't worry if you try running you won't get far once I've eaten your arms and legs I merely need you alive to act as his vessel. Nothing more. That won't be necessary. I swore an oath before our duel. An oath grants power in exchange for a certain constraint. Mine was, if I lose, I will obey my opponent. Once put in motion, an oath cannot be broken by the one who swore it. I will keep my promise to you because I must. Hmm. An oath, is it? In that case, I have a question for you. What does the Abbey plan to do with the Nominat? To wipe out the demons, of course. We want to end the era of disaster once and for all. And how exactly does the Abbey plan on wiping out the demons? Is the Nominat going to wander the land, slaughtering them all? They... they never told me. And Nominat's ritual is kept confidential even within the Abbey. All I know is that it involves Melchior. And it looks like the only way we'll figure out Inominat's true nature is by deciphering Lafisette's book. We'll have to track down Magyu's friend, the one who can read the ancient tongue. If we go to East Sultan Southgand, we ought to find some clues to her whereabouts. But first, we have to figure out where we are now. We need to find a settler or a village. Something. <laughs> I'm surprised us chuckleheads even know our own names. Even the greatest scholars don't know everything at first. You can't get answers without asking for them. <laughs> Fair enough. Hard to argue with that. I've never seen a Moloch quite like him. Eleanor, your job is going to be to protect Lafayette, even if it brings you into conflict with other exorcists. Because if you turn on me... I know. Like I said, I can't betray you. Listen, Lafayette. If she makes any strange moves, I want you to stop her immediately, okay? I don't think Eleanor is such a bad person. Besides, she's oath-bound to her promise. She's lying, obviously. That's only something you do if your life depends on it. Yep. An oath is an art that takes complex rituals and lots of hard work and time. Hardly worth the trouble, to be honest. I told you already. She wants to take you away from us. Women are creatures of deceit, boy. If you say so. She's right. Of course that goes doubly so for Velvet the Vengeful Villainess. Well, I won't deny it. Hmm. 
Hmm. What is it, Lafayette? I was told that women's looks can be deceiving, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to see. That's an age-old problem for men. You with me, Eisen? Aye. Women are fickle creatures at best. They lie as easily as they breathe, and men can never see through their deceptions. I totally feel you. Sounds like you've both been through hard times. The wounds women leave on a man's heart take longer to heal than a cut delivered by a sword. Uh, it's that bad? Beware a maiden's tears, boy, and guard yourself well. That's my advice to you. Beware tears and guard myself. Don't put any weird ideas into Lafayette's head, you two. They're just facts. If you fill his head with any more garbage, I'm eating both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yikes. The swordsman and the pirate having troubles with women? <laughs> well, women are nothing if not difficult. I've the deepest sympathy for you both. What do you think of the ladies' reactions? Well, Velvet won't eat either of you, and Mogilu didn't seem sympathetic at all. See? Appearances can be deceiving. And it seems you've absorbed the lesson well. Right. I'm not like that, though. Huh? Yes, some women use their tears to manipulate others, but not all do, and I for one despise such duplicity. The women who did that to Aizen and Rokuro are just the extreme. Yeah, I can see how much you hate dishonesty, Eleanor. Huh? Um, yeah, that's right. Be a good example for the boy, then, so he doesn't end up like Rokuro and me. I intend to do just that, whether or not you ask it of me. Eleanor is a lot stronger than she appears. No! <laughs> 
Sorry to cut you down. You better be ready. Stone. It's... It's just a rock. Take it if you want. I think it's really rare. The way it sparkles. I think it might even be bright steel. Bright steel? Never heard of it. Yeah, it's actually a rare metal used to forge weapons and stuff. You don't find it just anywhere. If there's bright steel here, that means we must be in either Endgand or Islegand. Both are a long ways off from Midgand. I doubt the Abbey has many people stationed out here. That's our pirate! Arr! Here there be treasures shiny and sentries few! At the very least, this could mean we'll be left alone for a while. Nice find, Lucky said. Thanks! Now wash your hands. Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> the only way to learn where we are I can fight is you. to turn someone to ask, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Stop fooling around. But I'm serious about my fooling around. What's eating you, Laffy said. If people say you can't judge women at face value, does that mean you can with men? Sure. Men are simple creatures. Men are simple. Oh! You talk like you're an expert in all things masculine. But you can only speak for your own family. As if you're one to judge. And I'm sure you've charmed a magnificent lord to be your lover. Sure. What does he look like? Is he tall? None of your business. Don't tell me. He was always on the other side of a swinging door, so you only saw his feet? <gasps> I see. What a lovely crush that must be. I read that story. It was a book called The Legs of a Man. Oh? I've never heard of it. I've read it too. It's a sad, bittersweet tale. But I enjoyed it quite a lot. I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. Maybe when I have some free time after killing Artorias. <sighs> <laughs> I just wanted to know if men could be judged at face value. It's not often you find bright steel above ground. I hear it's a lot of trouble to unearth, even in the regions it's normally found. Yeah. Mining for minerals takes a lot of specialized techniques and experience on the part of the prospector. They examine the soil, the water, the plants, and so on, where the same mineral was found before. Then search similar environments for the next big find. Sure, but it's not like they succeed every time. It's all a big gamble. Isn't there a simpler way? I read in a book once that you can use a pendulum to find water and metals underground. It's called dousing. What's dousing? You hang the pendulum so it's facing the ground. Then you chant the magic word, magic Kazam, and wait to be amazed. A little bit of ore on its tip will sniff out buried treasure in underground lakes like a bloodhound on a prickle bore. You don't seriously believe this. Eh, it's just like fortune telling. You win some, you lose some. That's why they call it prospecting. So, if pendulums are used for fortune telling, why the hell is Zavid running around using them as weapons? He uses wind to control its trajectory. I think it's easier for him to manipulate pendulums in a fight than something like a whip or a rope. Oh, that makes sense now. That seems pretty clever. He's probably also doing it to make himself stronger, too. Malakim broadly fall into four elemental types. Earth, water, wind, and fire. 
each strong or weak against the others. Wind beats Earth. Savid is a wind moloch. So when he obtains Earth element minerals, his own strength is boosted. I never realized Malachim could be so calculating. Then if pendulums react to a Moloch's powers, maybe they can actually do this dousing stuff like Magilu says. Yeah, it's worth taking that thing seriously. Zavid might like to joke around, but when it comes to fighting, he knows full well just what he's doing. He puts an awful lot of thought into that weapon of his, if you ask me. You don't? I spare all my thoughts for my sweetheart. Yeah, right. You just like to cause trouble without putting much thought into anything. You'll be rushed on my blade. <laughs> You there. Got a moment? Gah! Are you guys with the sword breaker? The what? Get, get away from me! I'm sorry, alright? We'll class act. Attack you as you apologize. <laughs> Mighty demon, I beg you. I'll do anything. Just spare me. I only wanted to ask you something. You don't have to worry. This woman here is an exorcist. Huh? R right. I'm Eleanor, a Praetor exorcist. Please, remain calm and hear our questions. You do look like an exorcist, but what are you doing with ruffians like these? Top secret Abbey business. That's all I can say. Now, can you tell us where we are? And are there any ports nearby? You don't know? You're on Cadmix Island in Islegan. The port is at the other end of that ravine. 
I'll send a Sylph J to the Von Altia. Thanks. One more question. Who's this sword breaker? Ah, he's a demon. Causes lots of trouble around these parts. He only attacks sword fighters, and he breaks their blades. He's even taken down a number of Praetors. Hence the name Swordbreaker. He wields a fine sword, clearly forged in a foreign land. I tried to find his lair to steal the weapon for myself. But that's when I was attacked. A foreign sword? I'd be careful if I were you. If he spots that sword on your back, <laughs> you'll be in a world of trouble. Sounds like a real nasty fellow. Well, he tries to pull anything on this demon, and he's in for one munchy, crunchy surprise. <laughs> you folks are all crazy. Either way, I'd say this is a blessing in disguise for you. You're lucky to still be alive. Take this chance to abandon your life of crime. Let's find that port and meet up with our ship. On to battle! Read any of this old writing? No. I've studied many languages, but I've never seen script like this before. Can you read it, Eleanor? I've never come across this language either. Where did you find a rare tome like this? Um, w well... It was a lucky find at the capital. What can I say? The kid loves to read. I was surprised to see how many Malakim like to read. Genfu does a lot of reading too. I didn't know that. It's true. I'm not sure what he's been reading, though. Did someone call for me? Bienfu, do you like to read, too? Oh, yes. Books are a treasure trove of knowledge. But I'm a greater Malakim, so the literature I enjoy might be a bit above your level, Lafisette. How to talk a human female into becoming your vessel and physically escalating with cuties. <laughs> Bien? Physically escalating. What does that mean? You, you don't really need to don't know. need to know. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm confiscating all of these. And I have some questions. Bien Fu, you better be ready for a thorough interrogation. Bien! Huh! <laughs> You look like you're having fun, Rokuro. Well, I'm a Yaksha. A Yaksha? A spirit of war? Yeah, a demon that lives for combat. But this Swordbreaker has cut down Exorcist with its foreign blade. Aren't you scared? Of dying, you mean? Yeah. I'm not afraid of dying. It's more that I'm afraid of not being alive. Huh? Fighting is my life. It's all I want to do. So I fight. That's what living means to me. Ah, living only to kill. A demon is always going to be a demon. Well, if you're going to be blunt. <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> Get any pity or 
compassion for me. Just wait until I pull out the good stuff. Oh, 
was tougher than I would have liked. What's wrong? An enemy. That sword. Is that Stormquell? 
a demon wielding a foreign made sword. You must be the sword breaker. Not much to cut. Killing flash! But I'm just close. I want this! Form zero! Moving. I'll take this one. Come and get me. Sorry, I just got a little riled up. Do you know that demon? No, but I know his sword. A blade called Stormquell. Stormquell? Whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with us. Let's just get to the portal already. to be 
careful not to misuse my power. Don't get overconfident. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, really? Don't waste my time. No mercy! Won't that one I'm sorry about what happened back there. I thought he was going to kill you. Yeah, I know. You were just doing what you thought was right. Yeah, maybe so. That's good then. I didn't give you a clear enough warning to stay out of it. If it ever happens again, I'll give you a proper warning. You really don't want me to help you? Even if your life is at risk? Yep. Why? Actually, I'm not too sure myself. Huh? There's somebody out there I need to defeat by my own hand. I want to strike him down. I want to triumph against him. But to do that, I need to be a better swordsman. Someone you have to defeat. In a sword fight, yeah. And I'll do anything to ensure I come out on top in the end. No matter how much it costs me. Life, limb, hell, even my heart and soul, I'll pay it. Those feelings have been so central to me for so long. I lost my dang humanity somewhere along the way. Why do you need to win that badly? <laughs> to be honest, it beats me. Maybe it has to do with me being a demon. Or maybe that's why I became one. Either way, it's more important to me than life itself. More important than life. But still, I owe you for saving me back there. There's no victory pose in store for me if I'm dead. Ugh. Okay. Is that how you thank someone for saving your life? Huh? I'm just being honest with the little guy. And no offense and all, but why do you care? You don't even think it disrespectful? You truly are a demon. Yep. Big old demon. <sighs> Guess it's time to fight! <laughs> Hey, is everyone all right? Don't get careless. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
We're finished here. Let's go. Scout ship setting sail. Unless you really want to get hurt. Don't waste my time. <laughs> Now, why does that name sound so familiar? Hey, Eleanor? Thanks for stepping in earlier. Think nothing of it. My orders are to protect you, so I did. Oh, I see. Of course, orders are no orders. I'd save anyone under threat from a demon. Well, how noble. Oh, I got it! Got, got what? The tragic tale of the sword storm quell. Gather round and listen, oh grimy travelers. Once, centuries past, there was a sword renowned the world over for its peerlessly sharp edge. Its forger shrouded in mystery. So mighty was each swing of the sword, it produced howling winds that could level mountains. No other sword could match its power. The people, in their superstition, began to call it the God Blade. This god blade... is it Stormquell? Shush! The tale is merely beginning. Now, there was one man who was truly enamored with the god blade. His name was Kudogane, a blacksmith of wondrous talent. His heart was set on forging an even greater sword, 
And he had a name in mind for this sword. Stormquell. The sword to conquer the Godblade's roaring winds. And did he make it? Kurogane forged scores of challengers to the Godblade. But each would-be Stormquell was shattered by the implacable howling wind. Some say the wielder of the Godblade chopped off his head. Others say he took his own life. The truth is lost to the dusty cobwebs of history. But perhaps he, and his grudge towards the Godblade, somehow yet live. A grudge that spans centuries. You hear tall tales like this all the time. That sword and its inscription we saw were probably just inspired by the legend. Perhaps. But if that's the real Stormquell, we should all sleep with one eye open tonight. What makes you say that? Because that godblade Kudogane wanted so desperately to top has been passed down through my family for generations. Its name is Stormhowl. Oh. In other words, we could well bump into your armored friend again. Let's hurry it up. not to misuse my power. Oh, it's 
ready to fight. I did good, didn't I? Don't get overconfident. I unleashed all my power. Maybe I overdid it. Listen, Lafayette. What is it? You can't trust her just because she said she'd protect you. Orders or no orders. Remember, Malakim are just tools to exorcists. But... she really did protect me. I know you feel you owe her for that. But do you have to look so happy about it? Sorry. I'm not asking for an apology. I just want her to know that we've all got an eye on her. No matter how close you two get. I want her to understand that I come first. So... What do you want me to do? Let's see. To put it simply, I'm number one, and Eleanor is number two. Got it? I get it. You're number one, and Eleanor is number two. Right. I'm number one. Wait, this is kind of stupid, isn't it? It's alright. I understand. Uh, that's not what I mean. You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. Don't get overconfident. <laughs> We're finished here. Let's go. What's that doing here? Oh, I think these were used to keep robbers away. Like wards around old king's tombs. I've read about this. There's a trick to the stone. It reacts to heat. Heat, huh? Then there's only one thing to do. Don't 
victory is ours. not to misuse my power.
better be ready. Well then, let's move on. If you aren't the craziest demon, your body's harder than your own sword. Who's this? That's Lord Shigure, one of the only two legged exorcists in the entire abbey. <laughs> A legged, same as Melchior. Eleanor, fancy meeting you here. What the hell happened to you? you get captured by a demon? Or are you a turncoat? Uh, I... I'm... Eh, don't matter. I do my own thing. I got no standing to tell you how to live. Still, today's my lucky day. Never thought I'd encounter the one and only Stormquell. Shigure, I think someone over there wants your attention. He looks lonely. <laughs> You're right, I'm being a jerk. Just can't pass up the chance to tease my little brother. Can I, Rokuro? Your brother? You haven't changed a bit, Shigure. You go blind, dumbass? I'm bucket load stronger now. You're the one who hasn't changed, I bet. You still hung up on trying to take me down? The one you want to beat in a fight? That's him? I'm not who I was that day either, brother. Oh, wait. You're a demon? Ha! <laughs> now it's getting good. But I wonder, has that really changed anything? When my real storm howl breaks your sad reject again, you gonna piss yourself like last time? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll handle him. Rocky said, no matter what, I need you to stay out of it. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's been too long since we crossed swords, brother. Shut up! You're dead! I'll make you regret sparing my life last time! Feisty as a demon. I like it. <laughs> It's over. We could have a real fight sometime, if you actually brought a decent sword. Go ask that old bastard there to make you one. I'll be waiting. Huh? Who? That demon in the armor, Kuragane. The blacksmith! From the story! I'll be waiting for you at Port Cadnix. Unless you can beat me, you ain't getting off this island. Who are you to decide that? You got a problem with it, lady? <laughs> Best of luck, you demons. You'll need it. Lord Shikurei, sir. I'm on a high-level mission. Eleanor, babe, I get it. You've gone rogue. Have fun with that. I see you again. I'll kill you. He wasn't even trying yet. You can tell. But if we all fight him together... That won't work. But there is another way. What are you talking about? What way? Follow me. Aren't we going after him? This is his fight. It has nothing to do with me. But Shigure said he'd be waiting at the port. He may be a nutball, but I don't think he's fool enough to let us slip past. Exactly. And as a swordsman, he's even more skilled than Artorius, and that's saying something. We're mice with our tails pinned, and the cat's licking his lips. At the very least, Korogane seems to have some kind of plan. Fine. We'll hear what he has to say. What was that fat cat creature with Shigure? You mean Morgrim? She's a Moloch. She just looks different. And? And what? She has all the abilities of a Moloch. I'm not trying to keep anything from you. All I know is her name and that she's a Moloch. Huh. Lord Shigure is an exorcist legate, but he's also a warrior who can match exorcists or demons even without the use of Moloch arts. 
Since no one has ever seen Shigure use an art, Morgrim is considered one of the Seven Wonders of the Abbey. The Seven Wonders of the Abbey. No one knows Morgrim's capabilities, or even the details of Shigure's pact with her. No one! Except me, that is! Huh? This is all highly classified, but... Morgrim is incredibly lazy. The price she demanded of Shigure for making a pact with her was... Grooming and defleeing! Anything else? Oh, and on a point of sensitivity, she's chubby, not fat. She may be our enemy, but she's also a woman. You should try not to hurt each other's feelings. <sighs> Anything else? Her thick eyebrows are all the rage with Malakim, so much so that false eyebrows are expected to be the next big thing. <sighs> well, if he's that strong without Malak arts, I don't want to see what he's like with them. What were you thinking, Eleanor? Attacking a legate like that? Uh, well... Oh. I just thought Rokuro was going to die if I didn't intervene. Oh? You'd kill one of your own allies for a demon? I... I acted without thinking. Sometimes I'm too soft-hearted to a fault. I'd say it's less that, and more just stupidity. You're supposed to be protecting Lafayette. Don't get yourself into trouble you don't need. Even if one of her own is in danger? Even then. This kid must be really important to her. All right. I understand. Luffy said. Next time she acts up, stop her. Understand? We don't know what she's got up her sleeve. O okay. Thanks for not telling on me, Eleanor. And I'm sorry I hijacked your body. I understand how it feels to want to protect your friends. The problem's with those demons, not you. But I think Velvet has the capacity to feel the same way, too. At least when it comes to her brother. Is that why you're staying with her? I'm... I'm not sure. It's hard to say. I have to figure out what's going on with this group. If I ever hope to wrest the child from them.